in, ladies and gentlemen. We're here at the new cage facility. Just got a tour around in the 908. And today we're gonna try to melt off this little inch of snow that we got last night with our new uh, spray technology from Frost Inc. It's uh, spray technology, obviously, to apply a liquid de-icer or pre-treat. And we're gonna see if it'll melt off this one inch of snow. So let me get hooked up to it, and we'll see what happens. So I'm standing in front of the sprayer. Um, it has these adjustable jets that you can turn in or out, and it's just basically you're gonna create a stream and shoot five or six streams right down through the snow and down into the substrate. It's hydraulically driven, of course. So we attach it to the machine and then just run the pump. And we had a customization done to this right away that will um, added these nozzles on the side so that we can shoot this stuff out about 35 feet wide, do basically the whole two or three lanes of a road. So I'm going to try both ways. Um, we're going to shoot, you know, streams down about eight feet wide, and those will be directly, you know, those will be directly right through the snow and get right down into the substrate. And then this uh, this broadcast method is going to kind of cast uh, more of a spray over a 35 foot lane width, and we'll see which one works better. I almost forgot to mention. There's a, there's a right height to have this at too. So we want this to be at about this 18 inches, 20 inches off the ground to get the right penetration. I also wanted to note on this, there's this nice pressure regulator dial that uh, you will adjust to about 40 PSI when you're trying to, uh, if you're trying to get the right nozzle rate. So let me get it hooked up and do some spraying and we'll see what happens. All right, so we finished the first half of this lot doing uh, the little spray nozzles, not the broadcast ones. We were just streaming right down into the snow. Um, it's about 18 degrees out right now. I think we're already starting to see some of the effects. Just come on outside here with me. So, right here you can see it's already starting to melt down. I don't know if this spot is flat, bare asphalt or... You can kind of see the streams where I did it. I didn't do it completely. Um, I skipped about three or four feet in between each pass. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, by the way, we're using a calcium chloride product versus a sodium chloride product. It's called Heat Wave. We started at about halfway, so it looks like I used about 15 gallons on this parking lot right here to do the half from the loading dock over to the south there by the inventory. So now I'm going to turn on the broadcast part and go do the rest of the parking lot. And I got to crank this. Valve up here, so you get the correct PSI for those broadcast nozzles. After we're done spreading this, um, as we wait for it to start taking effect, we'll go look at some of the new stuff we got working. All right, so just got done broadcasting the remainder of the parking lot. Boy, those uh, those broadcast nozzles were hungry. I used about 25 gallons in a matter of minutes. I probably should have been traveling a little faster. Don't tell the city I did a little bit of their street. We're going to wait to watch that melt off. Hopefully it works. I almost forgot to mention, we're going to share the results of this parking lot. Melt. And we have a video camera up on the building that'll... Uh, watch the process and the progress of this melt off. So we'll share that with you um, as soon as it happens. 
So as I was saying, this part of the lot was plowed. Wanted to uh, see what happens to the burn-off effect after it's been plowed. And this part of the lot, I just applied 15 more gallons of the heat wave product just trying to melt that sucker right off. Um, so we're gonna see if uh, what it takes to melt that one inch of snow um, applying the product after the fact. This part of the lot over here, if you remember, is where we applied um, about 25 of that, those gallons um, using the broadcast method. Um, with the nozzles where it's not jetting it down and it's just kind of putting it on the surface of the snow Not much of an effect here. It probably just thinned the snow out a little bit without uh, really melting it um, Down you know just so it's definitely uh, Important to use the jet method when you got post application um, To get that uh, down to the substrate so it weeps out. We're gonna watch the time lapse of this new application here uh, from the video camera on the building and until that uh, time ladies and gentlemen have a good night Hey all you snow fighters out there It's another great day at cage Another great testing day at cage So I'm following up about 12 hours 14 hours after uh, the first application of our uh, de-icing product liquid form and if you remember right this line here was left this windrow was left between the stuff that I plowed off over there so that strip that half of the lot was plowed yesterday afternoon after the pre-treat was put down um, and then this side of the lot <clears throat> had not been plowed just had a heavy dose two heavy doses of pre-treat um, and in total, this was about a three quarter inch to one inch uh, snowfall. So as you can see, we got a lot of melting action going on here. And there's water, this slush stuff. And these are pretty low traffic areas, by the way. So we don't drive a lot on this. I and mean, there's a couple semis that came in today and yesterday, but we have, we have water going here. And it's about 20 degrees, so it's pretty, pretty easy to melt this stuff. This side being the side that we bladed off, melted off right away. Walking up closer to the building, I want to show you guys where I didn't really pre-treat. Um, and yes, the sun hits this a little bit differently, so the sun is starts out over on that corner of the building and comes around. But as you can see, this line here, right here, is where I didn't treat really much at all um, but obviously the asphalted spart there is is where I started pre-treating right along this line here and it's pretty significant the difference um, not much melting going on there stuff works um, you have to get the right uh, application rate down and I think the main thing is is to uh, pre-treat, right? So it's in the it's in the substrate before the snow even hits it. Um, this last event, we had a lot of uh, freezing rain, kind of ice before the snow. So I think the pre-treat might have gotten washed away a little bit. I think we're supposed to be getting a few inches of snow coming in on Thursday, Friday. So we'll do some more testing and let you all know what the results of that are. Make sure you do a good pre-treat. That's got to be the trick. Get the calcium chloride level in the concrete or in the asphalt. Get that elevated so that it's just that residual that sits there. And as soon as it starts snowing, it starts to melt. Now I want to show you one of the new products the Cage has uh, just released. And it's a back catch kit. This back catch kit um, enables you to contain more snow in your back drag process. So if you're doing those hundreds of driveways, um, townhome driveways or loading docks, whatever, um, this just bolts onto the back of your trip edge and it's flexible, flexible polyurethane material. So you can still run a curb hard. You can see 
right here where we've actually been running curbs and, and testing um, really hard on this, um, angling the snow away from the curb, uh, like we were cleaning the curb perfectly and doing a curb-to-curb -curb process. This, uh, this thing just flexes right out of the way. It doesn't hurt it at all, and then it just comes right back to its original shape and helps you contain a lot more snow in your back drag process, so probably about four times the snow. A lot less dribbles. Um, so if you're one of those guys out there doing hundreds of townhome driveways or hundreds of loading docks, um, you're probably going to want to consider this kit. Um, 195 bucks, and you can probably cut your time in a third. If you have a nine foot plow and you have to go up that driveway three times to collect all your dribbles, it might eliminate one whole pass. So if you're going up a driveway 900 times a night, it might turn it into 600 times. Think about that math. This other uh, product that we're working on out here, I'm gonna take you out and show you kind of a glimpse. Um, this is also patent pending. We have not released it yet. So you guys that have this access to this video, um, okay, so here's all you're gonna get. Check it out, what's different? You guys see what's different there? All right, as my daughter would say, she's taking Spanish class. No say, it's coming. Well, all you guys and gals, snow fighters out there, go get some rest and hit us up when you wake up for that new back catch.